So, folks, OMG, it is happening. And Jimmy Boy MAGA Jim, he is D-O-N-E done, and now he's finally admitting it. He's caught up to what we've been saying. And so what I have for you, and it's glorious, so hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps me out, is Jim getting humiliated by us and everybody else just over the last eight hours or so. And it culminates in him making a shocking announcement, a shocking announcement that is so brain-breaking in its awesomeness, you are, you're going to want to see it. Watch all of this, and then we'll break it down. Congressman Swalwell, uh, you must have some mixed feelings about this. Uh, Jim Jordan uh, no longer serving as chair of Judiciary Committee uh, has certain benefits uh, if he moves up to speaker. Uh, the investigations have certainly uh, been shut down, at least for now. But, but you know, we, we can laugh, Lawrence, uh, about it. It's, it's comical to see the position that they've put themselves in. In fact, for Americans at home, if they're wondering what's this like, well, it's like a school without a principal, a construction site without its superintendent, or a baseball team without its manager. It's rudderless. And you may not agree with the direction any speaker on their side would take us, but they at least set the agenda and, and bring certainty. And where we are right now is Republicans are an opposition party. They're not a governing party. And the moment demands more than they're able to offer. And so we can't just wait around for their chaos. We have too much to do. And so we are offering a bipartisan solution to get things up, to get things done uh, and reopen the Congress. What is the bipartisan solution? Well, it, as, as we gave the votes, the majority of the votes to uh, raise the debt ceiling and pay our bills, and we gave the majority of the votes to keep government open, uh, we stand ready to support any speaker that you know will keep government open in just under 30 days, who will keep Ukraine in the fight, who will look at you know uh, making sure Israel can defend itself, and that we can also help with the humanitarian crisis uh, that's in Gaza. There's a lot that we need to get done, and if that is a Republican, I, we are open-minded to you know supporting a Republican, but they have to come to us. And right now. Uh, they're just, you know, paralyzed uh, in chaos. So uh, the Jordan uh, team seems to be using threats. You have uh, one uh, member saying uh, she got a death threat after after her vote. Uh, and uh, Congressman uh, diaz Bellart said, uh, the one thing that will never work with me, if you try to pressure me, if you try to threaten me, then I shut off. So uh, they are... Uh, obviously uh, trafficking in, in threats on this, and the vote is just getting worse for Jim Jordan. It, the pressure campaign is not working. These members have shown themselves, at least so far, uh, to be courageous and to put the country over the chaos. And the question now, Lawrence, is, well, why don't you take the ultimate uh, leap and cross the Rubicon of solving this problem. And, and again, if you put up somebody reasonable, there's a lot of people on our side that would be perceived as reasonable. You'll have Democratic votes uh, to support you. And, and so uh, don't just keep repeating the crazy by going through this exercise and putting up insurrectionists. Put up, you know, a problem solver who's going to get things done and you'll have Democrats ready to support you. OK, I want to read you a text exchange purportedly between the wife of Republican Congressman Don Bacon of Nebraska and an anonymous ally of House Speaker, House Speaker wannabe Jim Jordan. The anonymous texter writes, why is your husband causing chaos by not supporting Jim Jordan? Bacon's wife replies, who is this? The texter writes, your husband will not hold any political office ever again. Oh, OK, now. That threat did not work on Congressman Don Bacon. Today, he voted against Jim Jordan for speaker for a second time. And here's what the congressman had to say after that vote. They are messing with the wrong guy. I'm not going to be cowed by this stuff. Several other Republican Congress members who voted against Jordan also spoke today about threats and intimidation that their campaigns received. So the death threats are maybe an actual strategy here. Tonight, Republican Congressperson Marionette Miller Meek says she received credible death threats and a barrage of threatening calls since she switched her vote in order to oppose Jordan in round two of voting today. And she added, one thing I cannot stomach or support is a bully. We're going to unpack that right now with Michelle Goldberg, opinion columnist for The New York Times. Michelle, first of all, 
Republicans speaking out against bullies is like a slightly cold comfort given who the titular, the, the sort of nominal head of the party is. Right. Although I guess it's impressive in that, you know, the moderate kind of quote unquote moderate wing, what passes for moderate Republicans, you know, have been so incredibly spineless that I think most people expected them to fold. You know, they thought that they would fold on the first vote. Now it seems like increasingly like the attempts to threaten them in death threats. Right. And the thing is, death threats in the past have been very effective in getting Republicans to do the will of the Trumpist base. Right. I mean, we saw that in, for example, McKay Coppins talking to Mitt Romney and Mitt Romney saying that his colleagues were saying that they wanted to vote to impeach, but they couldn't afford the, I can't remember, millions of dollars a year in security, personal security. And they were worried about people going after them. And so that has been the sort of MO of the far right Republican Party, not to make these threats themselves, but when they say that that they're going to unleash the base, they know very well what that entails. Release the... Uh, this is right where Speaker McCarthy was in, in the process, so we're, we're just going to keep talking to members. Are you disappointed the resolution didn't come to the floor? That's Jim. I'm not in trouble till we get to 16. Jordan, um, CNN is reporting, Congresswoman, that there are Republican holdouts who plan to stagger their no votes which in a plan that seems like strategic humiliation for him so that the numbers continue to fall. Um, what, what it, it's hard to ask because I'm not sure I even care about why they're doing what they're doing to Jim Jordan. But do you think they have a plan B or C or is it, is it just the McHenry piece? I don't know that there is a plan. I mean, what we've seen from the Republicans thus far is that they lack all strategy, right? Because what is the strategy of coming to the floor and being humiliated? What is the strategy of not being able to count? I mean, when you think about McCarthy and the fact that he was booted from his speakership in the first place, he had 48 legislative hours before he had to bring that motion up. I don't understand how you can allow someone to file a motion to vacate and then you don't take the time to make sure that you have your votes as the Speaker of the House. The one thing that you should be able to do or be able to have your whip do for you is count. And so he should have known that he was about to be booted. He definitely shouldn't have been relying upon Democrats to save him because, to be perfectly honest, we never elected him in the first place to be our Speaker, not to mention he decided that he wanted to talk all kinds of noise about us after we made sure that this government it stayed open. So I don't know that strategy is anything that I would actually uh, attest to the Republican Party, because even when you look at Gates, the fact that Gates decided that he wanted to vacate the speaker and had no idea of what to do next, he absolutely became the dog that caught the car. And honestly, that seemingly is the only plan that the Republicans have right now is to continue to be the dog that finally catches the car. And then they say, what do we do now? Democrats, please help us. And we will give you nothing in return for your help, except for oppression. You know, Charlie, I wonder if we are applying a failure of imagination here. I wonder if the chaos and the lack of a speaker isn't the point. Well, I don't know that there is a point for many of these people. You know, I, I agree. You know, Matt Gates is not a tactician. Uh, he is not a deep thinker. Um, I don't think that he he necessarily gamed this out except for what it would do for him. Um, to the extent there is a strategy or a tactic of bringing these votes to the floor, um, they think that by forcing people to go on the record, they can they can mobilize the right wing media ecosystem to bully them, to attack them. And it's worked in the past. It worked for Donald Trump. It worked for Kevin McCarthy. And Jim Jordan's thinking, well, it will work for me. I will um, I will browbeat them. I will threaten them and that they and they will cave it. It's not happening. And one of the reasons it is not happening is because you you are seeing a critical mass. And I do think that this reporting um, is probably accurate, that there are more um, members who are watching the totals, you know, looking to see how vulnerable he is, and then, you know, planning to make their move when you get to the third or the fourth ballot. Whether that's to humiliate him or not, or to simply protect their own flanks, that's that that's not clear. But I think that at the weaker he gets, the further he gets away from 217, the more momentum there's going to be for this the Patrick McHenry uh, option. And once and once you empower Patrick McHenry, um, a lot of things happen, including not just the humiliation of Jim Jordan, but um, the growing irrelevancy of this, uh, the crazed jackal caucus in in the House, which has which has you know imagined that that it held the balance of power. 
Turning to breaking news in Washington just moments ago, Republican Jim Jordan saying House Republicans will meet in just the next hour to discuss a path forward as he continues his bid for speaker after two failed votes. We got a conference at 11. We're going to talk with our, visit with our colleagues there at 11. What, are, what, what is the message going to be at that meeting? It'll be a vote on uh, later at the conference. So Jordan actually lost support from round one to round two, leading to his colleagues to instead openly debate ways to temporarily empower the acting speaker, Patrick McHenry. Joining us now is NBC's Ali Vitale on Capitol Hill and Brendan Buck, former senior advisor to House Speakers Boehner and Ryan. So, Ali, what's going on this morning? It looks like it's all coming together in real time now, Jose, because on his way into the office, Jim Jordan, currently the man vying for the speakership, said that he would meet with his conference around 11 a.m. It's not clear what this meeting will accomplish. We have seen them go behind closed doors time and again, leaving their phones at the exit and trying to just talk among themselves. It's sort of become an open joke among Republican lawmakers that I talk to that this is always sort of a festivus or an airing of grievances, but it feels like they are well past the point of airing grievances. They are at a point where frustration is at a fever pitch. There are active conversations about figuring out a way maybe to go around electing another speaker immediately and instead empowering the current speaker pro tem, Patrick McHenry. That would require a few things. And the vote itself would look different if they were to put forward a resolution like that. It's one thing that I expect to ask Congressman Jordan about if and when he comes out to go to that 11 a.m. meeting with the rest of his colleagues. But in terms of what happens next. They are expected to go to the floor sometime after this 11 a.m. meeting. Democrats are holding their own caucus session where they're going to talk through where their caucus is at. There's an openness there according to my conversations with Democratic members yesterday and last night for Republicans to come to them with some kind of a plan. So you could see everyone's been ripping into him, right? As I've been saying, people in the media, people saying it's clear that like if a deal is to get done, it's not going to get done with anybody like Jim Jordan, but especially Jim Jordan himself, given how divisive he is, not only within the broader Congress, Democrats don't like Jim Jordan, I think for fairly good reason, uh, but many Republicans don't like him. And I'm sure even some of the 200 or so people that voted for him did so out of fear or obligation or lack of an alternative, but I would be shocked if even, you know, uh, 50 more people, I wouldn't be shocked if 50 more people that voted for him actually hate his guts. And so he's done. You have Swalwell and stuff pointed out. What Jim has just announced, you have it up here on screen, and you saw a bit of a hint of that where they were meeting to plan their next steps. The breaking information is that Jim Jordan is out in the sense that he is going to allow this scheme to go forward to take the current temporary speaker and make them a you know an empowered temporary speaker at least until January and then they're going to revisit but there's no way if Jim is dropping out now he is going to be a viable candidate in January someone else will be the next speaker Someone else will be. It'll Unfortunately, it'll probably still be a Republican, but it isn't going to be Jim Jordan. And I hope you enjoyed this exclusive info I brought you.